Congratulations uh, on, a, on a hard-fought victory tonight. I, I know that fighters oftentimes don't look at things like wagering lines and stuff like that, but, but, but sometimes it's a kind of a, an indicator of public sentiment. You were the biggest underdog on the card by far. Um, did, did you know that? Did you feel any kind of sense of disrespect or that people you know, were lauding so much expectations on your opponent maybe not giving you the respect you deserve coming into this fight? Uh, I kind of, you kind of got to expect that a little bit, you know, coming into somebody else's home territory that they're going to root for him. You know, they're going to boo me, try to get him, help, help him out, you know, kind of get inside of my head. I didn't actually look at the odds or anything like that, but uh, I knew I was going to be the underdog. It's fine. And as the fight was playing out, how did you feel about it? Because it did seem like he was having some success on the feet, uh, you know, in spurts. Obviously, it was competitive there. But, I mean, how was it playing out versus your expectations? And did you feel coming in that, you know, you were going to need to get us to the ground to, to really find an advantage there? Uh, I just took it wherever it went. I mean, if there was a chance for the shot, I'm going for it. If I had a chance to punch him, I'm going to try to punch him. I mean, it's just how you do it. <laughs> Certainly a big win for you here on a big stage. Um, what do you think should come next for you? I mean, do you, have you started thinking about uh, a name, a position, how far you want to advance? Because I think, you know, you were kind of flying under the radar, but I think this will be the kind of fight where, where people really start to pay attention to your name. Yeah, I, whatever, whatever they want next. I, I, they say the name, I'll fight them. It doesn't matter. I don't care. It's what we're in the business for, just to fight, right? Talk to us about that toehold ankle lock that you put on Matthews. Um, you mentioned in the post-fight chat that you heard a pop. Um, was that something you were consciously looking at to do during the fight, or was it just a wily trick that you usually do in, in the in the training room that you just saw an opportunity for during the fight? I just uh, I got a hold of the angle and I started just trying to go for it. it. It was in front of me, so I started taking it, and I I felt the pop, and unfortunately I couldn't get it all the way through to you know to finish him off, but. He's tough. I'll give it to him. Is there anything about him that surprised you? Did you get the Jake Matthews that you expected? Oh, uh, yeah. We kind of – a little bit of stuff I've watched or whatever. It, he, you know, he likes to move a lot. And that's – I know I did do that in the middle of the ring. I don't think a lot of people like that. You know, just said, come on, let's just come fight right here. I'm tired of, you know, moving so much. <laughs> I want to be lazy, I guess. <laughs> another another interesting moment. You went for that Kimura quite a bit, and he got sort of got stuck in that position after you went for it the first time. Did you see that as a technique that would bring you a little bit of success? Because he looked looked a, not that he didn't know how to get out of that position, but he looked a little bit startled every time he went for it. Yeah, he held on really well. He, he was he had a good enough grip on him on himself to where I couldn't get it popped out of out of there to really submit him with it. But you know, I I tried to use it to for my advantage try to either reverse him or, or land a few extra strikes in there, whatever I could do. Considering you seem to be having most of your success on the ground, were you shocked when he continually tried to go for the takedowns? No, um, he he did say, I think, in an interview that he, you know, he thinks he's a better wrestler than me. He thinks he's better than this. He thinks he's better than that. So I'm not surprised. If I mean, just like me, I, if, if it's there, go for it. You talked about the uh, Australian crowd and, you know, coming into his territory. Was there some satisfaction in sort of silencing that crowd a bit? Oh, not really. I mean, I, I'm not mad at him. Like I said before, I'm not really mad at him for, you know, booing me or anything like that because that's their, that's their guy. You know, you're going to cheer on your home guy. And it was just – it was nice to get to win either way.